If I had to sum up today's video in a word, it would be conflicted. One of my favorite pastimes is having extremely strong opinions on things that absolutely do not matter at all. Like feeling strongly about things that do matter is stressful and there is a time and a place, but I find it to be quite refreshing every now and then to just hyper fixate on a low stakes drama that has nothing to do with me and doesn't affect my life in any way. And today's topic has kind of become my Roman empire, so to speak. And this time it just so happens to involve a little bit of ancient Roman tradition because Mark Zuckerberg has just showed off an enormous stat of his wife and nobody online seems to know how to feel about it. But first, welcome, my name is D'Angelo and I am your professor of retroactive statistical predictions, which is a very real degree that I definitely do have. Or maybe I'm just broadcasting myself talking in my room like YouTube used to be. And in today's lecture, I'm actually expecting a bit of participation because I promise you by the end of this video, you'll find your opinion on this probably falls into one of a few very different but very closely knit camps. So today you get to find out where you fall on the increasingly intense Zuck statue spectrum of my own invention. Dave here has elected to sit this one out because he's a little biased towards the subject, what with it being about statues and all. So it looks like it's just gonna be you and me and basically everybody else on the internet who has seen this. And boy, does everyone have some strong opinions. So I feel like our leading man this time needs no introduction whatsoever. We all know who Mark Zuckerberg is. He's the billionaire CEO of Meta. Meta obviously owns like half the internet, including Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Reality Labs, which sounds like a villainous organization from a Marvel comic. And Zuck here recently unveiled a seven foot tall statue of his wife, Priscilla Chan, which he shared with us on Instagram, just one of the enormous social media platforms that he owns. So here it is. Uh, the work itself that has sparked so much discourse. We have Dr. Chan standing here for scale and you can see this thing is enormous. My initial thoughts, my initial impressions are mixed but there's the statue in question got a close-up see it in action boom and if you do a little google search uh the headlines will reveal that people are quite split mark zuckerberg commissioned a giant statue of his wife and the internet is divided what the zuck mark zuckerberg reveals bizarre statue of his wife the ultimate wife guy creepy statues impressive husbands everywhere are shaking as this MSN article tells us. So is this good? Is this bad? In what world does anyone actually care? And so to sort through this range of internet discourse, I have invented what we shall hereby refer to as the Zuck Statue Spectrum. The Zuck Statue Spectrum is a three-stage range of opinions. Things get a little more intense as the numbers increase, but before I explain stage one, I actually want to say there's technically like a stage zero, and that is where your opinion doesn't register on the scale at all because you literally do not care. If you are a Zuck zero, you are just radically indifferent to this statue of Priscilla Chan. You don't care, no thoughts, head empty, didn't ask. I asked a friend about this and I received this six letter reply. TBH, IDC. Yes, if you're wondering, do I bug my actual friends at 930 for opinions on random internet discourse? I absolutely do. And I found this reply to be not just impressively succinct and somewhat enlightening, but also very demure, very tasteful. See how they only answered in six letters, but still got their points across? It's very demure. So I'm going to weigh the pros and cons of being a Zuck Zero. The pros for me are... To be honest, I don't care either. Like, I know this sounds contradictory, but I contain multitudes. I recognize that this doesn't matter, but that leads me into my cons. And my con is something not mattering has never been enough to stop me from overthinking it. In fact, the less something matters, the more likely I am to overthink it. So let's just go ahead and skip right along to Zuck 1. So if you are a Zuck 1, you like this statue. Don't worry, this doesn't mean that you endorse Mark Zuckerberg in any way, shape, or form, but people on the Zuck one side of the spectrum, they just, they think it's a nice statement. It's beautiful, it's romantic, artwork is good. Artwork goes into eyes, eyes happy. And so out of the Zuck one camp, we get discourse like, everyone loves a wife guy when it's Doug Imhoff supporting Kamala Harris on the campaign trail, but when Mark Zuckerberg builds a giant blue statue of his wife in his backyard, suddenly it's weird? All right. This article uh, then goes on to point out his net worth of literally $184.2 billion and ask, what else are you supposed to spend that kind of money on? And 
this has to be a joke, right? Like this is obviously satire. I could almost spend like the whole rest of just this video talking about things he probably should be spending that money on. But you know what? I kind of love the idea of my husband commissioning a statue in my likeness. I'd probably weep. This is honestly pretty lovely and wholesome, even though Zuck sucks. Zuck one is not about worrying too much about the Zuck himself, but just the act of the statue. I think I too would weep if somebody commissioned a statue of me like this. I can imagine myself now just sobbing like, why didn't you just give me the money directly? You know how many tacos I could have bought with this? In this economy, maybe like one or two. I don't know if you've seen fast food prices lately, but still, this is beautiful and totally awesome. Well done, at Zuck. Well, the fact that his Instagram username is Zuck is crazy. If Zuck is Zuck, then who is Mark Zuckerberg? Instagram.com slash Mark Zuckerberg. Oh my God, he's missing. And you know, jokes aside, I can see where the Zuck one people are coming from. In some ways, this is a good gift. The quality of it looks very beautiful to me. The artist that Zuck commissioned to build this is incredibly talented. His work is like spooky, haunting, honestly, all of the things I kind of appreciate in artwork. And if there's one thing I feel like nobody could say about the Priscilla Chan statue, you can't really say it's boring per se. Certainly more of a thoughtful gift than like an egg apron, for example. Unless you are super into aprons, I am not here to judge. Seeing anybody support the arts by like commissioning an artist to create artwork with their human mind and not artificial intelligence. Love to see it each and every time. It's sad that the bar is so low at this point. I feel like I have to hype people up just for not using AI art, but this is where we are. And as far as the romantic aspect, I feel like it's sweet in the same way that like that one scene from Avatar The Last Airbender season 3 episode 18 Sozin's Comet part 1 The Phoenix King where like Sokka builds that sculpture for Suki and it's kind of a lot but it's the thought that counts and then he gets laughed at by 12 year olds for having no riz <laughs> and then they almost die it doesn't even look like that. I swear to god y'all Avatar The Last Airbender is so good it's so good. Like, one day I'm just gonna upload like a 60 part series of me reacting to every single episode of Avatar The Last Airbender. But anyways, I think we understand what Zuck One looks like. Like I said for the pros, support the arts, it's a cool sculpture, yada yada yada. My cons for this is I would hate to receive this gift personally. I understand the angle of it being a nice gesture, but seriously, if you're trying to show your appreciation, stick with the tacos. I'm a bit too simple of a creature for all this, I say when my video set is me surrounded by like beautiful objects. I guess I am extra, but I don't think I'm seven foot tall statue extra. But is that just because I don't have seven foot tall statue money? The world may never know. But anyways, that brings us to Zuck 2. So again, three part spectrum. If you're at a Zuck 2, you are in the very middle. So what do you believe if you're right here in the center of the discourse? People in Zuck 2 believe that the statue is weird. Maybe it's not evil or harmful, but it just sort of epitomizes that classic Mark Zuckerberg weirdness that just kind of gives you the ick. And to these people, I do have to concede, Zuck is just a deeply strange individual. Every time he goes viral for something, it's it's weird, right? This is this this is weird. This is a weird image. He's scary. He's strange. I almost want to say he's objectively strange. And the circumstances of Mark Zuckerberg are what send me more than the images themselves. Why is his face lathered in like a hundred layers of sunblock while he's doing a black widow pose on like a surfboard, a wakeboard, a foil, a foil? I do not water hard enough to know what he's standing on. If you know what kind of board this is, let me know. He saw that he was being followed by a photographer as he was surfing, so he thought he could disguise himself with extra sunscreen. This is a quote straight from the Zuck's mouth. One can assume he was joking, but the thing with Zuck is like, is he though? Also to make it clear, I'm not knocking the act of wearing sunscreen. At a company wide meeting reported by Buzzfeed News and The Verge, he said, I'm not going to apologize for wearing too much sunscreen. I think that sunscreen is good and I stand behind that. But for this to even be a topic of conversation at a company wide meeting is really the Zuckerberg weirdness I'm trying to convey here. And it's the case every time he goes viral. I mean, and who could forget the smoked meats? Hey everyone. Sorry, the millennial pause. That was like a full second. But yes, even something as innocuous as a dad grilling is just so weird when he does it. We are live from my backyard where I am 
smoking a brisket and some ribs. There's just something about the way he phrases things that makes me not want to trust him. Like, does that make sense? My brain internalizes the opposite of everything he's saying. So I can only assume he is in someone else's backyard here. He has broken in and stolen their grills so he can smoke meats. Do I smoke meat? Smoking meat, smoking these meats. Smoking meats earlier in the day. Smoking these meats, just set the charcoal up and you set the, the wood chips up. He's just a guy smoking meats in someone's backyard presumably his the thing with zuck is like you can't even explain why he's so weird or like why these things are going viral but it's like if you know you know and you know grilling is not a weird hobby at all but the metaverse comes to mind even just like the delusion that is the metaverse like zuck is a man who thought we were all going to just hop around in virtual reality with no legs instead of talking to each other like normal human beings when meta's graphics look like this this like my first instinct is to say that this is bad but the fact that they have actually managed to capture the strangeness that is the zuck in bad cg format almost loops this around to being impressive but no this is terrible and he really thought we were all gonna play this looks great zuck nice work these remind me of my college model that i made in unity from cubes and spheres like i'm sorry but meta literally has more money than god and this is what they had to show for it imagine your graphics being so dated that you have to roll out legs as a software update legs are finally coming to mark zuckerberg's metaverse the tech ceo said getting it right will be hard taking mark zuckerberg seriously is hard okay that's what's difficult like no this is not an ai generated video this is just mark surfing while holding an american flag in a tuxedo and drinking whatever that is liquidized smoked meats for all i know and so i am sorry to show you so much back-to-back -back cringe with no warning but i just really wanted to give the people at zuck to a fair shake this is what comes to their mind when they think mark zuckerberg therefore it's hard to see things like this and not get Get weirded out as well the man just has a strange aura what can i say people in zuck 2 also criticize the statue itself just functionally and aesthetically genuinely curious about what the back of this looks like and that actually made me wonder what does the back of this look like do i want to know is it even meant to be seen from the back why would anyone want a six foot tall statue of themselves? I don't get it. I can't say I get it either. I understand the confusion of it all. It's just strange. I really like this comment. That is so tacky. Thank God for my husband, heart emoji. They're like, my husband would never build me a six foot tall statue of me. As if like most people would even have the ability to do this. I think there is one comment out of the Zuck2 camp that I do agree with wholeheartedly. Um, wow, okay. I guess do you on this. I'm not feeling the color or the silver. I know that that is kind of like a staple of the artist Daniel Arsham, but I'm kind of not feeling it either. It's kind of like too blue. I know they were going for like that Statue of Liberty patina look, the thing that some metals do when they get really old, but I feel like there's an unsubtlety to the specific shade of turquoise that gives less of a Statue of Liberty and more like the blue people from Avatar. This is like the second Avatar franchise that's been mentioned in this video. It's a beautiful work of art. I'm not knocking it. I do find the color combo to be kind of uncanny though. Others in the Zuck2 camp argue that it's a uh, red flag. A clinical psychologist who specializes in couples therapy told Business Insider that such a lavish gift might be a red flag. I do think like most people probably should be somewhat critical of absurdly expensive gifts. But again, with the 160 whatever billion of it all, I'm not quite sure it applies to Mark Zuckerberg and Priscilla Chan. I even saw comments saying like, oh, he did this as an apology. She's going to leave him. And you know what? Maybe I'm no prophet. But if I'm being honest, something tells me this is just kind of like a normal Tuesday night at the Zuckerberg family home. Like as Gail King asked, is there a backstory here or just Tuesday night at your house? P.S. Do you have an older brother who is black? I could meet asking for a friend. Man, between Oprah and Mark Zuckerberg's fictional black brother, Gail King is out here trying to collect billionaires like Pokemon. Imagine trying to explain that sentence to somebody like born before the 1900s. And I guess all that really matters in some ways is whether Priscilla likes it. And she seems quite unbothered by all of this. The more of me, the better question mark i do think like if this happened to me you would be getting a lot of question marks on my end you can't miss me literally exactly how i would react i'd just be like wow it's 
it's there and it is the size that it is and it does have my face on it because it's me thanks babe and you know in the grand scheme of billionaires gifting statues to their partners maybe marx isn't quite the weirdest jeff bezos really really likes his girlfriend according to the figurehead apparently made in her image on his half a billion dollar yacht i would much rather be a standalone statue than mount it to the front of a boat they made her some sort of bird fish person hybrid and when everyone was like oh uh that's kind of weird they were like what that's not her what do you mean very flattered but it's not says lauren sanchez and i'm like okay lauren all right lauren whatever you say but it can get weirder you've got this other dude peter brandt he's like a newsprint tycoon or something and at one point he was a billionaire and he commissioned an artist who created a creepy nude bust of model stephanie seymour a piece of often referred to as the trophy wife because I can't really show you the full thing, but it's her from the waist up and she's mounted to the wall like a deer head. Like it's literally this, but that dude's wife. So at least Zuck did not turn his wife into an object or a boat decoration. This definitely has more of a capturing your beauty vibe than like a hey, you're mine and I can literally put you wherever I want. But people in Zuck 2 are just not having it. Cheers to the artist who got a payday. Dude did a good job, but anything the Zuck does or says is just unbearable to me. So I hope I've accurately represented you if you find yourself in Zuck 2. I feel you, you are seen, and I too believe this man is just weird and he's incapable of doing not weird things. I guess like the cons of being at Zuck 2 are... I do consider it to be a nice statue and I do feel like it's genuine, but nah, that joint is weird, bro. And so if it kind of sounds like I've agreed with Zuck 1 and Zuck 2, it's because this is one of the very few issues on the internet where I think all opinions are valid. There's so many sides to what is ultimately a non-issue. I find it absolutely fascinating. But that, of course, brings us to Zuck 3. So Zuck 1 thinks it's sweet. Zuck 2 thinks it's weird. But Zuck 3 is like, nah, bro. We are not about to sit here and hype up Mark Zuckerberg when he's a billionaire. Now hear them out, hear them out. I don't believe Zuck 3 is just a group of haters. The argument is that what with Mark Zuckerberg being a billionaire and just, well, you know, inherently evil, it kind of adds this layer of grime that makes it a little difficult to view this as a standalone issue. And in some ways, this whole statue thing is in fact causing people to be less critical towards Mark Zuckerberg, even as a billionaire. You know when a TV show makes the season one villain return in season three or something and you go, you know what? You were actually not that bad compared to the new villains. I like you now. That's how I feel about the Zuck right now. Like he's just a simple, awkward, mega rich guy who wants to harvest and sell all our data. This person then makes the point that he's not as bad as Elon Musk. And it's like, maybe he's not as bad as Elon Musk on Twitter, but I think people in Zuck 3 see this as a bit of a slippery slope. The other billionaires are all trying to buy the entirety of public discourse or space or control over international military operations. Not that Zuck's innocent of all these things necessarily, but this purchase seems downright wholesome by comparison. But a certain level of wholesomeness can leave some people feeling like it's a bit too calculated. I sort of love that he is immortalizing the beauty of his wife. Him being married to a woman he seems to actually love and respect as an equal is the only thing I like about him. Of course, good PR like this is usually followed by a scandal, so I'm prepared to regret that statement. PR is sort of the name of the game with the Zuck 3 camp, and I must admit I see where they're coming from. I mean, usually if I think to myself, I'm going to sit down and make a video about Mark Zuckerberg, one could imagine I would be criticizing him pretty heavily, but instead all the discourse is just like, is this one really hyper-specific thing he did that doesn't matter at all nice? The Zuck 3 squad also has to wonder, does it matter even if it is nice? I mean, if the Try Guys fiasco taught us anything, it's that being a wife guy isn't exactly an indicator of being a good person. And the wife guy comments are rolling in. Mark Zuckerberg is the ultimate wife guy, says People Magazine. Zuck does seem to genuinely love and respect his wife, and I will always respect him for that. I always do find the wife guy discourse to be kind of funny because it's like, am I just delusional for thinking this should be the bare minimum? It is actually kind of crazy that we have to have specific terms for when men are not awful towards the girls and women in their family. He's a wife guy. She's a girl dad. Like, no, you're just a dad. It is not impressive that you changed the diaper. You made that thing. I guess they do technically have boy moms, but they don't really have like 
husband's women? Point is, it all just starts sounding goofy the more you analyze it, and maybe the point is not to analyze any of this at all. It's objectively a good thing to love your wife, obviously. I hope that much is clear. But there are just so many objectively good things about billionaires that kind of don't make them less awful at all. Like sure, in 2015, Mark Zuckerberg and his wife pledged, I guess, 99% of their Facebook shares to charity. But then it's like that charity was an LLC for some reason, as opposed to a nonprofit. And according to the New York Times, an LLC does not necessitate the same kinds of disclosures of public tax documents. And the couple can choose to disperse any profit from the LLC however they wish. In all those ways, the LLC acts more like a private investment vehicle vehicle for the couple. So it's like even good things with billionaires have this air of just not good. And like we've seen how philanthropy and donations get used as a shield for criticism. A certain kids YouTuber comes to mind. And the statue is most certainly resulting in like the nicest press coverage I've seen from Mark Zuckerberg in a long time. And is that not sort of bad in and of itself? People are starting to see the billionaires as relatable again. I'd 100% pay to have a statue of my dog made. I'd rather see rich people do fun stuff with their money than hoard it all away. But the thing about billionaires is they're not like us. They are like uniquely evil in a way that can only be achieved with near unlimited wealth. Hawaiians call Mark Zuckerberg the face of neo-colonialism over land lawsuits. Attorneys for Facebook CEO have filed suits against hundreds of Hawaiians centered around his 700 acre estate. These lawsuits were against Hawaiian landowners who owned small slices of his estate that were passed down from generation to generation. So while you may be looking at this and thinking of how you do it to like immortalize your cat, Zuckerberg was thinking of new and creative ways ways of disenfranchising indigenous people. And sure, the lawsuits have since been dropped, but as articles like this point out, when the statue itself kinda looks like the icon of colonialism, the Manifest Destiny Lady, I completely see how the Zuck 3 people find it difficult to separate the two. This is a beautiful sculpture and what rich people were put on this earth to buy not parts of Hawaii. For some people, it's just kind of hard to separate the art from the colonizer. And as for my opinion on Zuck 3, actually, I want to show you this article first because it was so funny. So I was on this Huffington Post article and it was kind of about how like, if Mark Zuckerberg actually donated those 99% of shares like he said he would, how could he do that in a way that would, you know, be beneficial or effective? And this is literally one of the longest articles I have ever seen in my life. I have looked at many an article for videos for my channels. This is genuinely like a new world record for yapping in an article to the point where I just had to give up. Me, the guy who made the two and a half hour video essay was just like, I ain't reading all that. Sorry. But what is so funny is that at the end of all of this text, there are only three comments. Hi, I request your support of money to finish building the three churches. I wish somebody gave me some money where I can buy me a car. I need one. Real. And then, uh, how can you tell if a Mark Zuckerberg message is legit? Something about this just tickled me, like, to no end. It's like the equivalent of sending five paragraphs in a text message and someone just responds like... Okay. But anyways, as for my opinion on Zuck 3, I think we've gone over the pros. I can easily see how this is like muddying the waters of really serious criticism we should be leveling against billionaires. But part of me does want to ask, can a statue just be a statue? But at the same time, I already know the answer is no, because nothing is just one thing. That's the kind of the thing with systemic issues is they affect everything. So like, I want it to just be a statue, but I understand how it is obviously more than that. And it just leaves me feeling like Britney Broski in this gif. So Zuck Zero, don't care. Zuck One, think it's sweet. Zuck Two, you're like, nah, that's weird. Zuck Three, you're like, wait, this is actually kind of bad. And again, for all of these positions, I have to emphasize, one is not more correct than the other. I am genuinely curious to see like who falls where. I have a guess in my head of like, the general ratio of camps I'm gonna see in the comments, but maybe I'll be surprised. But if you thought those were the only camps, I've actually been lying this entire time because there is a secret bonus category that I am calling Zuck X. Yes, the Zuck statue spectrum has an X. So if zero, one, two, and three are right here, X would be over here. And the people in Zuck X believe that the unveiling of the statue is actually just the latest step in Zuckerberg's transformation into Caesar Augustus, the ancient Roman emperor. Now, I'm aware that that's a pretty big hear me out, but what if I told you that this one actually has like the most evidence? His obsession with Rome and modeling himself as an emperor is so bizarre. So if you're like, hold up, where is literally any of this coming from? It is actually a well-documented fact that Mark Zuckerberg 
is obsessed with like the ancient Roman Empire. Five times Mark Zuckerberg proved to be really obsessed with the Roman Empire. Like in this profile from the New Yorker, it says he studied Latin at Phillips Exeter and ancient Rome became a lifelong fascination, first because of the language and then because of the history. Zuckerberg told me, you have all these good and bad and complex figures. I think Augustus is one of the most fascinating. Basically, through a really harsh approach, he established 200 years of world peace. And you know, technically, I guess this is not Mark Zuckerberg saying Augustus is a great role model, but he did name one of his kids August. Between the names Aurelia, August, and Maxima for his three kids, are you starting to see like the extent to which this obsession affects him. Mark Zuckerberg keeps naming his kids after Roman emperors. And when you start thinking about the Zuckerberg hair and you realize it's literally just Augustus Caesar's hair and on the page for Caesar cut, Mark Zuckerberg is the only not ancient Roman emperor on the page. One would have to imagine this ancient Rome thing runs kind of deep, you know, like Carthage must be destroyed type deep. And you know, goofy t-shirts and goofy hair, I guess is one level of inspiration to take. But then when you think about how Augustus was known for like his really aggressive land grabbing strategies that uh, according to Wikipedia, dramatically enlarged the empire, annexing Egypt and all these other territories. And you're like, wow, that's sort of so similar to the thing in Hawaii. Wait a second. And you refer back to him admitting that Augustus is a approach was really harsh and he used to have this move fast and break things slogan for Facebook aka be really harsh in the pursuit of your goal and when people with more money than some entire countries want to break things obviously that's a bit concerning it all just kind of sort of loops back to the original Instagram post in which the caption says bringing back the Roman tradition of making sculptures of your wife so like are we bearing witness to just a nice thing that he did because he loves his wife that much? Or is this just another piece in his decades-long Augustus Caesar cosplay? These are the really hard-hitting questions that the good people of Zuck X are asking. And like pros and cons, I don't even think I have to weigh them for this one because I'm pretty sure they might be right. But if you did want to know my official position on the Zuck statue spectrum, I believe I am a two to three. As much as I want to love the statue, it's weird. I'm sorry. I can't lie to you. I can't lie to myself. And obviously, I'm just not really the biggest fan of Mark Zuckerberg in general. But despite my position here, I would never begrudge somebody who just wants to look at something as a beautiful piece of art without having to think about capitalism and its place in the broader context. Because certainly, for just a picture posted to Instagram, I think you should be allowed to do that. And that's basically my take. Dave's take, of course, is that he's the only statue that really matters, so this entire video is invalid. And as I said, I'm excited to see your take and where you fall into this general mess, if you fall into this mess at all. Now, of course, this is a part of a video where a layman would ask you to subscribe, like the video, and leave a comment, but I will ask you to enroll, evaluate the video, and submit your feedback below, because I am, of course, running a 100% totally, I promise I got the paperwork right this time and the lawsuit is no longer active, accredited university in some regions none of which are in the United States or any other country. But we're totally legit. Just ask anybody in the student body and they'll confirm it for you. And as for me, whether I'll be back in 24 hours or 24 months is anyone's guess. But until then, thank you for watching. And to all the billionaires watching this video who would like to immortalize me, just build a public library or something. I, I'm good on the statues. Thank you very much.